G'day, welcome back to the channel, especially my friends in Australia, across the ditch as we say, Remote ID. Now I've been doing some videos on Remote ID covering the US situation and some people have left in the comments things like, why are you even involved? What point is, you don't even live in America, what's that got to do with you? What has this Remote ID thing got to do with you in New Zealand or Australia or wherever you happen to come from? Well, this is what it has to do with us, right? Where Remote ID is already coming into effect in the USA and what, where the USA goes, everybody else follows. And here is the perfect example. This is from the Australian Government, Department of Infrastructure, Transport, Regional Development, Communications and the Arts, because I don't know why. But this is the Remote Identification Discussion Paper for Public Consultation. They say we are consulting on the dro Drone Remote ID Discussion Paper to decide how best to successfully adopt remote ID for drone use in Australia. Not whether we should adopt it, but how we can do it best. So it's already a fate to complete. You're going to have remote ID in Australia. It's They've just said it. It says uh, remote ID technology is carried by drones that can provide information about where the drones are flying and supports identifying drone operators and holding them accountable for their actions. Yes, you should be held accountable for having fun in the local park, hurting nobody, endangering nobody and generally improving your mental health. You must be accountable for that. My goodness, there's the assumption that drone operators are all bad actors trying to do evil things and they must be held accountable. This is the lunacy that is the government and regulatory approach to drones. Absolutely unacceptable, but that's what we get. Right, um, they go on to say why we want your input. We want your input so we can ignore it. That's, what, that's, that's how it works. I've already told you. We want your input so that we give you the illusion that what you say matters, but it doesn't. Because as I said here, uh, they've already decided. This is simply just to discuss how best, how to best, how, oh sorry, how best to successfully adopt this. Not whether it's on or not. It's oh. Anyway, let's go down here. They talk about the issues um, <laughs> and they say, should a remote ID mandate be developed? Well, you already said it has been. You just want to know how to do it. Don't, it's, they don't, they can't even be consistent, can't even be consistent. Which method of remote ID would be more beneficial? They're talking network remote ID or broadcast remote ID. And of course, broadcast is the only option from a technology perspective right now. Australia is a very big country. They do not have 100% internet coverage unless you go to Starlink. And that's not easy to carry around if you're just going out for a fly in the park. So it has to be broadcast, but they're going to give you the illusion that, you know, you can have a choice. And what impacts would remote ID mandate have on drone operators? Well. I think we can tell them. And what are the technical, security, privacy and cost implications of remote ID? Well, again, America's already shown us what those are. $50 modules you can put on your plane or your drone and transfer them over, which is utter bullshit because the cheapest one to date was $100 plus antennas plus shipping from Europe. <laughs> so it's not happening. It may happen, but it hasn't happened yet. So here we go. They invite you to tell us your views on the topic and you can include all this information. So let's have a look at the document you'll be discussing. Here it is from the Australian government. It is Emerging Aviation Technologies. Rem Actually, drones have been around for quite some time, but I don't think it's really emerging, is it? Um, remote Identification, Remote ID Discussion Paper for Public Consultation dated June 2023. This came out just the other day. I think it might have been yesterday or late last week, I think. And here we go. Look at the evil drone. We must protect the public from this evil drone. So they're not talking about big drones. They're not talking about commercial drones. They're not talking about anything. They're talking about hobby grade, toy grade hobby drones. This doesn't even have a gimbal with a camera on it. And it's on front and center on the discussion document. I don't know, Kaza, what are you thinking? Um, and so it just get all the usual disclaimers and guff and whatever. And here is the, uh, so what do we got here? Revision date, um, public consultation, feedback. That's not this document, I don't think. And here we go. They don't actually have a date on this document, but they go through all the stuff. I'm not going to go through it at this stage. I haven't read it totally myself. I wanted to get this out there so you guys could have a look and you know, browse it yourself. I will read it in depth. But one thing I have noticed is they're basically just lifting everything from the US, lifting it all from the FAA. In fact, if we go to, if I'll search for Freer, let's search for Freer. And here we go. Look, um, they're talking about um, about the FAA and AESA mandating broadcast remote ID. And then they're saying there are areas, free as a designed areas, where you, designated areas where anyone can fly. Well, no, because mostly they'll be operated by groups such as national model flying bodies and you'll probably have to be a member of the model flying body to fly there it won't be a come along and fly in Afria it'll be pay us money and fly in Afria so not everyone anyone can go along and fly pretty naive they don't really understand how this is working um, yeah so there is a lot of reference to uh, to the US situation and they also talk about and let's go I want to go up here and have a look at um, let me just 
here we go. Use users, uses, and benefits. And this is what I find really interesting. They're going to say they say here that remote ID, the benefit, the benefit to, you, to remote ID would include increased situational awareness to prevent mid-air collisions with traditional aircraft and other aircraft. Well, hang on a minute. Remote ID is not like ADSB. It's not electronic conspicuity. It's not designed to deconflict the airspace. It's designed solely to connect a person, an operator, to a drone so you know who's flying the drone, you know where they're standing, you know where the drone is. It's not designed to act like ADSB. And ADSB transmitters typically have 100 watts of power so that you can be able to be sure the signal is going to get through to anyone in the area. It's not going to work with Bluetooth. It's not going to provide a situational awareness and deconfliction of the airspace. So this is just bullshit. And then this is what I love. Helping track illegal or non-compliant drone use and report potentially suspicious drone activity to the relevant authorities for further action. Well, hang on a minute. Potentially suspicious. Anyone flying a drone is potentially suspicious in the eyes of the regulator. So the Karens will have a field day, just like in the USA. And, and the one I like here is helping track illegal or non-compliant drone use. So if you're non-compliant, you don't have remote ID, how's remote ID going to help you? The, the authorities track that. It won't. <laughs> it's like, excuse me? I don't know. And apparently remote ID is going to help educate the community around local laws and regulations. How's it going to, how's it going to teach people? How's remote ID, how's, how's one of the benefits of remote ID being informing and educating the community? Well, how's it? This is going to be a pretty damn smick system if it can actually teach people things. <laughs> and then, of course, <laughs> gathering of data. Yes, we know that surveillance, gathering of data, which will form an evidence base to support future regulatory and policy development or uh, catching and punishing people who transgress the regulations basically fishing expeditions, having every little flight logged, all our remote ID data logged, and if they decide to go, nothing to do the fr this Friday afternoon, let's go and find some poor sod who may have flown inadvertently in the wrong place or whatever, and or flown just after civil twilight, and let's ping him, let's find him, let's throw the book at him. Now, this is crap. This is just bullshit, honestly. And Australia, you're in line for it now. And so is New Zealand. New Zealand, the, 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 I gather that the cabinet here in New Zealand has just approved introducing remote ID in New Zealand and registration. It's just, it's all bullshit. Um, but if it saves one life, if it prevents, if it brings the toll, the death toll associated with the recreational use of multi-rotor drones, if it brings that down by just one, that'll be a miracle because then it'll be minus one because it's still zero. Idiots. We've got clowns. We've got clowns making rules. People who do not do this, do not understand this, have no experience, knowledge or understanding, are going to tell us what we need to do to be to keep people safe. Utter bullshit. And so Australia, you're going to have to start pushing back as well and pushing back hard. The first thing to do is to reply to this um, request for, for, for this consultation document. But don't get excited. They're not going to they're going to read it. They're not going to they'll do what they want to do. And they've already stated what they're going to do. They're going to reduce remote ID. So nothing you say here will have any difference. But you've got to do it so you can say we use the system and it didn't work. If you don't use the system, you can't complain because they'll just say, you should have submitted a, a response to the public discussion paper. So you've got to follow through the things, but don't rely on it. Do not rely on it. These people are not listening. Cloth ears, they don't care. Anyway, <laughs> that's my little bit of good news for Australian drone and RC model flyers. And you watch, let's watch and see whether the Australian National Model Flying Body sells out in the way that the AMA did in the USA whether they will say, yes, yes, remote ID is great as long as we get special areas that we can fly without remote ID and we can charge people membership fees to do the same. Let's see how that works out. I'm not saying anything, but I would not be surprised to see exactly the same thing happen in Australia. There you go. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for your support. All those who support me, I appreciate it. And now I've got so much more to do. Keep carrying on. As you see, I spotted this. I haven't seen anyone else post anything about this. I try to keep my eye on the pulse or my finger on the pulse. And as soon as I see something that's relevant, I will let you all know. It doesn't matter what country you're in. It doesn't matter what you fly. I will be your source of information to make sure that we do not get the rug pulled out from under us. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. Overregulation is like a tumor. It's killing a hobby. It must be terminated. Now!